When creating assemblies using the top-down design method, it's important to understand in-place editing. When you're working in the assembly, you're doing things such as adding components, defining constraints, and creating assembly-level features such as assembly cuts and component patterns. This is how you've worked all along when using the traditional bottom-up design method. In-place editing changes the focus of your design to an individual component instead of the overall assembly. This makes it possible to work in the assembly environment and be able to make changes to an individual part as if it was open in its own window. In-place editing is also called activating. Let's take a look at how you can use in-place editing. Suppose I want to make a design change to this cover. Of course, I could use the bottom-up design method and simply open the part in its own separate window, make my design change, then return to this assembly after making the change. However, to take advantage of top-down design, I can simply right-click on the cover and select Edit. A few changes take place immediately. Notice all other components have become transparent. This makes it easier for me to focus on the part as I make changes to it. Also, I can only select geometry on the active part. To further isolate the component I'm working on, notice the rest of the browser entries have a gray background. The stapler bottom cover now shows the model tree instead of assembly constraints. Finally, notice the ribbon has switched to the part modeling commands. Of course, I can turn the visibility off for any components that are in the way since I can only select the cover in the graphics window. I'll right-click on the stapler base in the browser and select Visibility. Switching back to the assembly mode is easy. I can right-click in the browser or graphics window and select Finish Edit. The other components in the assembly are opaque again. The browser returns to normal and the ribbon changes back to the assembly commands. There's another way to exit the in-place edit mode that is important to know. This time, I'll double-click the stapler top sub-assembly in the browser to activate it. And then, I'll double-click the staple ejector. You're now down two levels in the browser. You could right-click and select Finish Edit until you're back in the assembly. But there is a return button that allows you to decide how many levels to go up. When I click on the drop-down arrow, three options are shown. Return goes to the previous level. Return to parent goes up one level. And return to top goes back to the assembly. Inventor lets you go from editing one component directly to another without returning to the assembly first. Let me show you how this works. First, I'll double-click the stapler bottom cover to activate it. And then I'll double-click the staple ejector again. When I click Return, the stapler bottom cover is activated again. I'll activate the staple ejector again. And then I'll click Return to Parent. Now the stapler top subassembly is active because it's the parent of the staple ejector, even though it was never activated. Now that you know how to get into and out of in-place edit mode, let me show you why this is important in top-down design. I'll double-click on the top cover part to activate it so I can make a cut. I'll create a sketch. Draw a circle. And then I'll start Extrude. And make a through all cut. Once the cut is complete, I'll exit Edit Part Mode. Notice the cut only affects the stapler top cover component and the other components in the assembly aren't changed. This is because I'm in place editing mode and the cut feature I just created belongs to the top cover component, just as if I had created it in its own part window. If you look at the top cover's feature tree, a new extrusion feature has been added. This is a simple example of how Inventor behaves when using in-place editing in the top-down assembly design method. In the next several lessons, we'll take a much closer look at top-down design.